Aloha guys, Scuba Chris here. I just came back from jigging. I, I went one and a half hours this morning jigging. It, it's April Fool's Day, April 1st. I got, I, I think it's like one big kuda that came in and I just kind of like playing around with it, hopefully that he will spit the lure. And, and he did, because I hate fooling around with those things. And I got a bunch of smaller ones that I go, oh, oh no, 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 but they all came off. But as soon as I came home, check this out <laughs> this is a rod box i have never ever seen a rod box this huge have you i mean things have probably changed a bit they used to, they used to be tubes and this is a rod box but yeah this is in actually pretty good shape don't you think so i know what's in here it's going to be my new c lilo now i did uh get one last week it was a nine and a half and that was for uh that was a casting model this here is a spinning model and i had already um cut it open so let's take a look now this one here is supposed to be the ce dash s ce is short for c lilo uh s is for spinning as you know i didn't see is for casting it's 962 uh um yes yeah, so a 962 which means as nine foot six inches in two parts oh man it's starting to pour already and it's a l model which is light that's it all this packing i'll be damned all this packing yeah all that packing was for that one skinny rod what a waste of materials would have been cheaper if they just put it in a tube well as long as it came in i got inspected too to make sure that it's okay you always every time when you get rods it's always good to inspect it so like i said this is a ce-s-962 la so uh like you know we broke it down all of this in previous times, but CE is for Lilo, C Lilo, S is for a spinning model. Uh, 962 means that it's nine foot, six inches in two pieces, all right? And the L is for light. So, you know, you go ultra light and light. So this is for a light application. And the reason why I went with such a, a long rod is because distance, you get the distance, yeah. And, you know, even though you think C Lilo, C Lilo rods are, Black, well, maybe the, the B editions are, but this is the A edition. So this is green. As you can see here, it's all green. Has cork. I see. Stainless steel uh, hook keeper. I'm going to this right now. This is unrehearsed. I mean, I just literally came in from fishing. All, see, all these guides are going forward, which is good. These are braid guides. And what's good about the brake guys, you can also use a uh, lighter monofilament or fluorocarbon. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten plus one guides. T I mean, ten plus one, which means ten guides to one tip. And when it comes in, you always make sure every all the guides are in one piece. And there's two there. And they're not bent in any other weird positions. Actually, I'm kind of amazed this came in in such good condition. Make sure that when you do your paperwork, you don't have to mail it in like you used to before. It's all online now. This is a one-year limited warranty, which means is that for the, uh, the life of the parts used in this, you have a one-year um, warranty, but you still got to mail it in if anything happens. Cork handle. Uh, mo most most of the more inexpensive rods are cork to make it lighter and cork isn't that exactly a cheap material anymore it's, it's made, made from a certain type of tree that originated from africa now uh, the grown all over the world just to ex export the cork not only for fishing rods but for you know <laughs> uh all right so so far looks good so this is a uh, Gra um, graphite blank construction which is very good this is not a cheap kind of build this is a good build but the price 
doesn't reflect the price is actually very low the msrp so the guides here are basically top of the line guides these are aluminum oxide guides um this is good good for um going into the wind and it's also good for braid usage like i had mentioned earlier so i'm gonna take a look at the uh real seat hey, hey all right look at that the the it's the hoods here for the, the the foot of the reel they they got the metal bands over them that's what i really wanted and these are stainless steel okay that's good too be sure to take this plastic off i also um i always coat mine with a fingernail polish or uh veritane reason being i'll give you an example my good friend jimbo he he went to Vegas, he bought a uh, expensive rod, came back, and within a couple weeks, it was all this was chewed up because he went out um, and he went fishing and his hands were covered with bait. The bait got soaked into the cork and the rats and the mice in his garage smelled that and chewed it all up. So he gave me the rod because he didn't want it anymore. But I figured out a way, which is in one of my videos, of uh, mixing sawdust with um, Elmer's glue. And I rebuilt this and it actually came out pretty good. Okay, this light action rod means that it's rated for four to eight pound now line. Now, if I went with the ultra light, I think that would have been two to four if, or one to four pounds, but I went with the um, light instead of the ultra light. Lure rating is one eight to three eighths, but I've had rods like this before, even though it says three eighths, I always go half. I mean, just play it safe. Don't don't go ridiculously high. And the, the weight of the, the two pieces here, there you go. The weight of this was 7.2 ounces. Not bad. This is what you call split grip because the grip in the back here is split. Uh, the back section here, this is 12 inches. The foregrip or the front part is two and a half inches. This is what you call a through blank handle design because the blank here continues on through the handle and that gives added strength. Okay, on a personal note, um, because I've been doing this for an awfully long time. Now, this tightens from the bottom up. I like rods that, tight, that tighten from the bottom up. I do have rods that tighten from the top going down, but it depends if it's a lighter rated rod or not. And the reason being is because if you have rods that tight, that um, um, will tighten from the top going down. Um, it can easily come loose during a battle. If you, only if you're fighting a big fish and it's a prolonged battle, this will work itself loose. Now, uh, to stop that, I've used electrical tape on some of my older pieces, but it does happen. And if that works loose, you can lose your fish, your reel, everything. It, it, you can break everything too. So, but, but because this one tightens from the bottom up, I like this. Okay, um, I don't know if a lot of a lot of companies or a lot of models to do from the real, I mean, from the top going down, but I know that a lot. I had that issue a lot with some of my older um, rods from different companies, and I'm not sure if that's still being used today. Maybe for freshwater, I'm not sure, but I like the fact that this one tightens from the bottom. Good job. So all in all. I, um, when I inspected everything, everything looks good. Now, what am I going to be my applications? Well, I got some live target lures. It's called live target that Mustad puts out. And, I, and they got what is called the fleeing shrimp. Some of the shrimp lures are about so big, three and a half inches, uh, three and a half inches. And I got some large ones that are four and a quarter, four and a half. Uh, those, but those weigh one. The smaller ones are half. So what I, what I was planning to do, I was going to use a three and a half. Uh, and I was gonna, in Hawaii we call whipping, but you know, that's spin casting, right? I was gonna whip it out. And that one has the hook on the top. It has a belly weight and the hooks on the top. So this way, when you jerk it along the bottom, the hook stays on the top and it won't catch the bottom. So this way it'll jump around from the on the rocks or in the flats. And that's really good for certain species like bonefish, um, other areas of the world, groupers and other, other fish that kind of like lurk around the bottom. 
but this is going to be a user specific rod and that's what i'm going to be targeting now last week i got it a casting model and that casting model is going to be great with my big casts this is spin casting model this is going to be more finessing because it's a light rating so that's my report i gotta go take a shower get something to eat because i had a couple hours this morning um on april fool's day and uh, i gotta cut that video and it was a good day i mean I, I got one huge barracuda smash down which hopefully was caught in a video and a bunch of smaller ones but i knew that was going to happen because this area i go to doing a, um, a minus high with the waters very shallow the jacks do not come in knowing the barracudas come in so but when the when the tide comes higher um out in the middle of the bay in the basin when the water rises um the bigger fish the bigger predators will come over the, the top and come in and and if you look at one of my videos i did it like one and a half weeks ago roughly that was during a high tide period i went in the morning i was ahead like seven or eight uh jack strikes and i only brought in i think maybe four or five uh but today was the opposite of that it was minus not a minus tide, just above a minus tide and the water was just too low for the jacks and i kind of realized that but at least the barracudas gave me some fight and i actually had to shake off one it was i had good size one just in front of me it was over three feet long but i was trying come on get up get up and it, and it finally spit spit out the uh lure because i was so happy i go oh great now i don't have to risk my digits anymore but that's the end of my review thanks a lot i gotta go feed my crying chihuahua upstairs thank you